love had some good days. I had some hills to climb. On all my weary days. Mm. Y'all know that song. I can't think of the words right now. But oh, oh, so much pain. But when I look around and think things over, all of my good days, I'll weigh my bad day and I won't complain I think that's one of the most beautiful songs and it was written by a brother that um who's passed away young man that died um at, at the precipice of his becoming a world um, renowned gospel singer. And I'm talking about none other than Paul Jones, Reverend Paul Jones. Mm -mm -mm. And nobody can write a song so personal, in my opinion, and so in depth, unless they understand the pain. That life can bring, especially when it comes to all our infallibilities, when it comes to our vulnerabilities, and um, when we begin to release them things, what comes out is beauty. You know, I often said, and I knew even as a child, what made Aretha Franklin was so great and what you heard in her voice was pain. You could look in her eyes and see it. And I don't know. Maybe it's the way musicians move. I don't know. But anybody that's spiritual can, can sense that. And some of the best music comes out of somebody's pain. And that's how I feel about Reverend Paul Jones. He was a, such a young man. He was born in 1960. Um, I believe he was born in Houston, Texas. Yeah, I believe he was uh, born in Houston, Texas, and he graduated from um, Sam Houston High School. He was actually called to the ministry at age 16. Then in 1981, he founded Greater New Grove Baptist Church and settled at East Houston Road, where it still stands today. As a pastor... He would broadcast services on Sundays on KWWJ 1360 AM, taking his voice into homes across the city of, of, of Houston, across Texas. Um, his talent had come of age, and he recorded his first live album at the Brentwood Baptist Church, which included stands out songs like Wounded, don't Want No Rocks, um, accompanied by Lewis, Leon Lewis on the organ. He garnered worldwide attention, though, with the fiery I Won't Complain, the one I attempted to sing when it's at the beginning of this um, podcast. Now, I, I know, uh, oh, man, I know that was such a powerful song. And a lot of y'all know it as well. Um, and a lot of y'all gonna get mad at me for doing this story so I might as well give you fair warning just like you still mad at me about James Cleveland and I don't talk about these individuals because I hate them or anything I talk about them because you know 
the human condition and the human and human behavior is just so uh, unpredictable at times. And it's especially when sex is involved. Uh, sometimes it's the fear of being found out who you really are, what you really like, as opposed to the normal, what they say, normal society behavior. I would just rather say, instead of saying normal behavior, I would more, I would more say the dominant behavior. Um, so, a lot of times when you have to suppress things like that and keep those things hidden and keep your head on the swivel uh, to make sure you're not labeled a deviant or whatever, a lot of times in your intro introspective, a lot of beautiful music and the beautiful writings and beautiful paintings, whatever, come out of that misery. And that's kind of how I feel about Paul Jones. Although I know a lot of y'all ain't going to like this. Again, I'm going to talk about it. So, um, it, it, you know, the, the, he was so brilliant that, you know, he had a voice remnant to me of Casey Haley. You know, remember them Haley boys? Of uh, out of North Carolina, Casey and JoJo. But what happened to Paul Jones was that he was murdered in 1990. He was only 30 years old. And on November 18, 1990, at around 11.30 p.m., Reverend Jones was spotted by a witness close to midnight driving someone near Greensport in Houston. November 19, 1990, around 12 a.m., two males, Alfonso Graham and one teen, arrived at Jones's fashionable two-story brick house in the 6300 block of Wimbledon Villa in far northwest Harris County in a stolen car. They knocked, and then they forced their way in and gain control over Reverend Jones, leaving him lifeless. Clothing, jewelry, and a 1988 Jaguar belonging to him was also stolen. Um, and the teen departed in the stolen car while Graham left in Jones's car. Uh, November 19th, at about 8.45 a.m., Reverend Jones was found by friends who had stopped by to visit. The home's front window was broken and the blinds were bent and twisted. Rooms were also in disarray, indicating a tussle or ransacking. His car was found nearby over an hour before 7 o'clock and portions of it was smeared with Vaseline to eliminate any type of fingerprints. November 21st, police released a sketch of a person of interest, black male, light complexion, tall, fairly long curly hair, and a light beard who was riding in Jones's Jaguar on November 18th. Hmm. Y'all heard that? Two males, one 14-year-old boy, was stopped in Galveston County by the police for traveling 112 miles an hour in a 55-mile-an-hour zone. Police identify the adult as Anthony Graham, who was charged with being a felon in possession of a firearm. Okay, so then May 29th, 1992, the, uh, the first trial ended in a mistrial when a juror held a discussion 
with police who discovered Jones's body. Police also determined that Graham knew Jones. And a bloody fingerprint found near Jones's did not match Graham or his 16-year-old co-defendant. The defense attorney, her name was Connie Williams, and, she, and, and Williams testified that the defense believes that the print is from the real killer and that the co-defendants plotted against Graham because of his criminal background, his past criminal background. So then on December 8, 1993, 24-year-old Alfonso Graham pleaded guilty and was sentenced to 20 years for aggravated robbery, Jennings stated. This was a horrible crime, and the defendant served the death sentence. He deserved the death sentence, I'm sorry. But given the evidence, this was a very good sentence. He will do some time and not just get out in a few months. The Reverend Milton Bingham, though, executive of Savoy Records, told Houston Chronicle that he was just days from signing Jones to a record contract and planned to release his album nationally. His death impacted the nation greatly with him being such a young talent. Brother John Jones, his brother, became a police officer uh, to battle crime in Houston. Um, he said because he wanted to influence young people because an adult influenced that young man to do a heinous crime. He wanted to put himself in a position where he would influence young people to be more of a positive influence. Well, Paul Jones is undoubtedly one of the greatest gospel voices of all our time. And um, those of us who were blessed to hear his music, we know that he was an enormous gift and a talent. And that can't be denied. However, what we're here to talk about is the other side because it's yin and yang. And let's talk about the dual side of this brilliant man, shall we? <laughs> 